Okay, let's get the disclaimers out of the way straight away. I love home ed. I love the freedom it brings. I love the fact that I can focus on compassion instead of curriculum. I know that it's a privilege as well to be a home educator. And I love my kids. They're my favorite part of home education. That being said, I also love this movie. And while I love home ed, I don't love everything about home ed. So here are 10 things I hate about home ed. Now, some of them will be very specific to me and my own idiosyncrasies, but I'm sure you'll find some things to relate to. So let's do this. Number one, and this one comes up very frequently when home editors get together to talk honestly, and that is the mess. I hate the mess of home education. Not because I'm some kind of clean freak, but because there is so much mess and organized chaos or disorganized chaos when it comes to home education. If your kids are in school, then they are outside of the house for five hours or so. And generally speaking, you probably would be too. Meals and snacks from that time will be prepared outside of the home. Your kids are wearing and probably wearing a school uniform, so laundry is drastically cut in half because they're not changing to five different outfits each day. They're not necessarily coming in covered in mud with all sorts of different layers of dirt on them. It's just, it's just not as messy if you don't home educate. You're not having 20 different projects happening in one small space that then has to be cleaned up in time for you to all have dinner. And it's just, it is messy and I hate it. Number two, and I try to think of one word that would sum up the range of feelings and emotions that come up in this, but it's the introspection, the kind of internal thought life or emotional life that home educators have, or at least I do, that kind of constant niggle of guilt or the comparison either with kids and families where they go to school or with other home educators, there are so many different negative feelings and thoughts that can come into our heads. And for some of us, that's just kind of on a constant loop, even though you know that you're doing the right thing, even though you know not to compare and that that's pointless, even though you know that every kid develops at their own rate, it's still there constantly. And it wasn't there when I was a teacher, it wasn't there in other jobs. And I think that might be down to point number three. The third thing that I hate to do with home ed, and this one might be very specific to me. I don't know if anyone will relate to this, but we'll see. When I was a teacher and basically any other job that I've had, I've been a cleaner, I've been a waitress, I've been a teacher, I've been a church worker, all sorts of things. All of those jobs have some measure of external validation. They have either systems that you have to measure, inspections that you have to go through, observations that people make, but there are systems in place where people have to tell you how you're doing. And Often the positive things that people are saying, and if you're someone that like me who really values words of affirmation, then that's really great. I might not like the systems that are in place. I might not agree with the things that they're measuring, but the fact that I had other people tell me how I was doing and that those were positive things for someone like me, that was really encouraging. Now it's good that as a home educator, I don't have all those external measurements and I don't need anyone else to validate. I get that like the conceptually that is really good, but actually sometimes I do just want someone to come along and say, that was really great. The way you handled that conversation, the way you turned that into a learning opportunity, the way you let them be free to follow that pursuit, that was just amazing. No one does that because most people don't actually see what's happening and they don't get to be witness to the thought process you put into things. So I, I miss that. I know I probably shouldn't, but I do. I miss the external validation that can help regulate some of my internal introspection. That got quite deep, I guess. So for number four, let's do no time alone. 
the fact that I have spent 15 minutes trying to say one sentence in this video is proof that we just don't get time alone unless you have an amazing support system around you for most home educators and most of them are women just statistically that's the case it's already hard to get alone time as a woman in a family because of the expectations that society has and that we have of ourselves sometimes but throwing having kids around constantly and being not just the primary caretaker but the primary educator for them and the primary opportunity creator you don't get much time alone number five and this might contradict what i just said but i think you'll know exactly what i mean the isolation and loneliness of home ed can be really hard even though you're never alone you can feel really really lonely Currently, I am in a community where I do have people in real life and online that I can connect with about home education, but that's not the same for everyone and it's not always been the case for me and I'm sure it won't remain the case all the time. It can be lonely swimming against the tide, which is what home education is. Even though our numbers are growing, we're still the rarity and that can be hard mentally and, and kind of emotionally feeling like you're on your own. And then just logistically, it can be really lonely. You don't necessarily get time to pursue adult interactions in the same way as you might if your kids weren't with you all the time. And sometimes there just aren't other adults around to interact with. So yeah, I hate the loneliness that a lot of people feel when they start to home ed. Number six, and I've had to record this one, honestly, at least 57 times because be interrupted because there's no time alone when you're a home educator but also because of the subject matter it's hard not to wax lyrical on this so number six is the judgment from other people so we've talked about the internal judgment and negative talk we can give ourselves i've talked about the fact that i kind of miss even though i don't want a system that involves it i kind of miss the external validation i'm talking now about external judgments of other people and they can be really frustrating. It can cause anxiety and it can cause fear, but it can also just be really, really annoying. That's kind of where I land on it. And I don't have unsupported family members. I know some of you do, and that must be really, really hard, that, especially when people don't understand home education, but they very confidently give their opinions. That can be really hard. There's also the fact that some people can think we're abandoning systems and not wanting to act for change because we're somehow removing ourselves from the society, which isn't true. But yeah, those things can be frustrating. It's frustrating going against what other people are doing. It can be hard to go against other people's opinions on what they think is right for you and your family as well. So yeah, that's definitely a tough one. Number seven, and this is one that I experience, but I don't necessarily hate, but it's a real negative of home ed that has to be discussed, and that's financial sacrifice. There are changes that you have to make in your finances to home educate. That is usually one person in the family having to give up paid work or most of their paid work in order to spend time being there for their kids to home educate them. And that looks like then giving up things that you maybe were used to or that other people and other families get to have that you don't. And I haven't really heard many people complaining about that because it's a choice that we make because we want to do it, usually. But it's still a real negative. There's a financial loss in home educating that can have a really big impact, especially when it comes to things like COVID where then everyone is struggling and if you're already down there a little bit with not having much spare change then that can make it really difficult for families so financial sacrifice is a definite negative to home education i'll be honest i've completely lost track of what number i'm at so this could end up being 12 things i hear about home ed i don't know it's a good illustration of some of the points in this video have been constantly interrupted by every delivery that was supposed to arrive this week arriving in the last 30 minutes my kids dressed up as christmas elves keep coming in delivering things under the door which is sweet but still a little bit distracting and i'm just trying to grab 30 minutes to record this video but it's hard as a home educator anyway 
back to the points. Another thing I hate about home ed, and this one might be niche, I'm really interested to see if other people experience this too, but the kind of hyper awareness of everything. I think some of it comes with parenting, but there's a next level that happens when you home educate. The amount of times that I've woken up at 3 a.m. in the morning and researched maths curriculums, the amount of discussions I've had with people about the biases in different curriculums, about whether I should even be using a curriculum, about how I should be set in my house, about how I should strew things around the house. I don't even know what strew means. The amount of authors that I've researched to see who is writing the books that I'm reading to my kids, the understanding of different neurodivergencies so that we can advocate for our kids. There are just, there's just like so much that we are hyper aware of and are often driven to find out more that I don't think I would experience if I had my kids in school because some of that we pass that burden responsibility over to someone else and yeah with home ed I feel like I'm inviting that burden of responsibility from all different areas so yeah it's the hyper awareness and it's very exhausting the next thing I hear about home ed and I do think this deserves its own point on the list because even though it's such a tiny thing, it's a really powerful little voice that I hear sometimes that I absolutely hate. And that's the little question that comes in every so often of, would they be better off in school? And I don't know what version of that question that you have, but that little voice of doubt, I hate because it can undo all the truths and facts that you know about why you home educate in just one quick moment. Yeah, I hate that. And the last thing I hate about home ed, and this is probably covered in a lot of other things, is that it's exhausting. The sheer exhaustion of physical tiredness, emotional tiredness, mental tiredness, like so many different ways of being tired. So many different hats that we have to wear as a home educator and they get quite heavy because we can't just pass them on to someone else when we feel like them. We've kind of got to be all things to all people all the time. That is hard work and it's exhausting. But we don't do this because it's easy. We do it because it's right and because it does bring us all so much joy and delight lots of times. But yeah, if you're someone who is tired, who is weary sometimes of some of the trappings of home education, who sometimes thinks there are things that I hate about this, then know that you are not alone and it doesn't mean we're doing the wrong thing, it just means that we're human. So yeah, there are lots of things that are hard about home ed and it's good for us to talk about them because it helps share the burden. So don't be ashamed of for having struggles with home education. And if you have any things that you hate about home ed, feel free to leave it in the comments. I'd love to know that I'm not alone in this. Like I said, I love so much about home education and I love home education itself. I think it is magnificent, but it's a struggle and it's right to acknowledge that. Anyway, I will see you in the next video and thanks for listening.